You may be wondering why I would lump three pretty forgettable shooters together in one video, but yeah, do you want three forgettable shooter videos or one big semi-memorable shooter video? Don't answer that. Anyway, these three games are considered part of the Star Soldier trilogy on the NES, even though no one really calls it that. These games were bundled together as the Caravan Shooting Collection that came out for the Super Famicom exclusively in Japan. The three games don't share much of a through line, they all have different titles, save for having the word star in them, and the first game doesn't share a publisher or developer with the following two. The original reason I could find for them all being linked is because they were often featured together in a Japanese gaming tournament known as the Hudson All Japan Caravan Festival. The term caravan here refers to modes where players race through timed stages to acquire a high score, and that will come back up later. So today's games are going to be Star Force, Star Soldier, and Starship Hector. So anyway, let's see what's up. Star Force! This is a of the This is you. Bye, Harrison. Star Force is an extremely basic shoot 'em up. You're a little ship attacking what amounts to a bunch of shapes. There is an auto fire, but it's slow, so you'll be spamming the shoot buttons a lot. Yes, buttons, plural. There's no special attack here. A is your standard fire, and B is also your standard fire. For the most part, enemy patterns are pretty standard shoot 'em up fare. Things enter, things leave, you know? What's missing here is any real recognition that you're in a spaceship blowing up enemies so you can save the universe. The scale of everything is very tame, and the end boss for each stage is just you shooting this giant target eight times while these turrets on the side barely attempt to stop you. It's kinda lame. You do this 25 times. There are a ton of stages in this one. They are pretty short, but the difficulty kicks in about a quarter of the way through. Not an impossible feat by any means, but a tall order given that it'll take you about an hour of flawless play to get the ending. There's not much in the way of upgrades either. You can rack up points by collecting a big B, presumably for big bonus, or a little B for, um, you know, little bonus. You can get one ship upgrade where you can acquire an enhanced turbo fire after your ship combines with another to form a super ship. As it goes in games like this, you become a bigger target, so the fun of being more powerful never really lasts long. There's not much wrong with this game, it's just extremely basic in every way. It lacks a bit in the way of imagination, and is just by the numbers in terms of what it does to satisfy being in the shooter genre. One weird, unique thing about this one is that your level progression is tied to how many enemies and objects you destroy. That's pretty rare for a shoot 'em up so if you die in a level, you basically restart almost exactly where you were. In some cases, you might just have to shoot one more enemy before boom, the boss. Shout out to my pal Crabmaster for pointing that one out to me. And yes, there's a story here. It's the crazy advanced year of 2010. A mysterious planet named Gordis was moving around in the darkness of the cosmos with the purpose of mass murder and plunder, according to the manual. I'm not sure how a planet can just murder stuff, but hey, it's 2010, anything is possible. You're a brave soldier riding in your space patroller when you challenge Gordis to a fight, so it's up to you to bring an end to the murders which have been committed for the past 2,000 years. So anyway, what's next? Shooting game, Star Soldier! The power of Big Star Brain! Bye, Harrison. Star Soldier is considered a spiritual successor to Star Force, and it shows. The ship looks basically the same, and the game behaves very similarly. Once again, you're battling uninspired enemy designs that amount to pissed off shapes that fire back. The game is a little impressive in that you can weave in and out of foreground and backgrounds. This is really neat for an NES game, but also quite frustrating from a gameplay perspective. You're never really sure if you're able to be hit by the enemies when you duck behind something, and you lose sight of your ship when this happens, which is maybe the worst thing that can happen in a shooter. Once again, there's no special weapon here, both A and B do the exact same thing. You can upgrade this attack though, something you couldn't do in Star Force. To upgrade, you shoot the P's and the S's you see on screen. Shooting the P will reveal the S, shooting the S gives you the upgrade. If those letters seem random, and that method seems strange, it's because it is. 
I guess P stands for power up and S stands for shoot this to actually get the power up. Shooting one S capsule will speed up your fire, two lets you fire behind you, and three lets you shoot in five different directions. You'll also get a barrier upgrade that keeps bullets and missiles from damaging you and acts like a life mulligan, but if you crash into something, you're done no matter what. Four capsules is a super powerful attack, but as it goes in shooters, for me, someone not great at them, getting and maintaining these abilities for very long was not a common occurrence. Each level you fly over a space station and attack all the enemies and fight against the star brain at the end, aka that level's boss. You have just a few seconds to destroy this thing and if you don't and it gets away you have to repeat the entire stage again. That's by far the worst part of this game, especially when you learn that one the hard way. So yeah, it helps to have upgrades and be very aggressive with the stage bosses to avoid repeating entire stages. There are 16 total stages here, and every four stages you'll face off against the Big Star Brain, which is a bigger and meaner stage boss. So what's the story here? The Vicious Star Brain, a computer programmed for destruction, is threatening the galaxy and is destroying spaceships with hundreds of passengers on board for no reason. No bueno. Only you can avoid the space enemy Star Brain has created to defend itself and destroy the central computer. All in your ship, the Caesar, known as the fastest ship in the galactic fleet, so no pressure. All in all, this one is a slight upgrade over Star Force. The enemies and environs are a little more interesting, but not by much. The bosses are at least challenging, and you can upgrade your ship in a few different ways shooter fans are used to. I might even argue that it's less difficult than Star Force, and that's mainly because it's a fair bit shorter, but both are tough to see the ending on. Star Soldier is still aggressively average as a shoot 'em up experience, there's not much to write home about concerning the soundtrack, and graphically it's less than impressive than our next game. The third game today has the distinction of being both a horizontal and vertically scrolling shoot 'em up. And here you get an alternative attack. So you have your regular missile fire as well as bombs you can drop for ground attacks. I should specify that this is only loosely connected to Star Soldier. Sources say that it is a follow-up because Hudson Soft developed both, and others indicate that it's just a spin-off, and really none of that matters because the story is just tacked on, and I needed a way to group these for a video. So what is the story? Well now it's finally the future. It's 2038, and I have bad news. The Fourth World War destroyed all of mankind. I guess the third one wasn't all that bad, so silver linings? Meanwhile, Starship Hector was thousands of light years away on a mission and returned to find Earth pretty messed up and inhabited by weird biomechanical creatures. By using its hyperspeed travel through time and space, or something, the Starship Hector has to defeat all these weird enemies to return the future Earth back to peace. I guess? Anyway, that explains why each of the game's six stages are called histories. And as I said already, each stage alternates between being vertically scrolling or horizontal. While six stages are a far shot fewer than the stage count on the others, don't think you're getting by with an easier game here. This is one where enemies fly out of nowhere, some program to crash right into you and wipe you out immediately, not to mention the slowdown here is apparent almost from the start with the amount of things they try to cram on the screen. This one does have a life bar though, which is actually nice, so you can take a few shots here and there and you'll find areas where you can refill that a little bit. Like, in this level, you shoot these little tree-looking dudes a bunch, and they drop life capsules, or here you shoot what looks to be an oddly placed vacuum cleaner hose? There are no weapon upgrades, but you have infinite ammo, and this is a game where spamming both kinds all the time is warranted. You can also get an extra ship if you hit different point milestones, so that's helpful. Graphically, this one is the best looking of the bunch, but its difficulty stemming from your starship being persistently underpowered makes it less than satisfying to play. I will say, the music here is probably the best of the three games, and the option for different modes is a nice touch too. There's a 2 minute and a 5 minute high score mode, which is a decent substitute for multiplayer, but it adds very little to the overall experience. These are the caravan modes I was talking about in the intro, and how the Hudson Japanese caravan tournaments were designed. There's even an option here at the bottom that says title. Huh, wonder what that does. Oh, it takes you back to the title screen. 
Of the three games covered here, I think Star Soldier is the most well-rounded experience. Each has its own pros and cons, and really Starship Hector is the best in a technical sense, but squeezes the fun out of itself by being so tough. I don't think I would recommend any of these to anyone to play unless they were otherwise out of shoot 'em up options. The Star Soldier lineage lived on for a while after this. There is Super Star Soldier, Final Soldier, Soldier Blade, and Star Parodier that all released on the PC Engine. You may be most familiar with Star Soldier Vanishing Earth on the N64. Star Soldier R released in 2008 as a downloadable WiiWare title, but there hasn't been any other entries in the series since 2008. Well, that does it for the Star Soldier series on the NES, and as always, be skeptical of computers programmed to take over the galaxy, and thanks for watching.